Okay, thank you all very much. Uh, I'll start with a quick question, and as you're thinking of some things that you want to ask, um, we'll give some answers, and then uh, I'll ask for uh, the audience to ask some questions. Uh, getting started with the film, of course, these things take a long time, from the conception of that to the final editing, all the writing, all of the screens. So, um, give us an idea of how long your uh, your films took, and just go right down the line. Uh, counting was a script that was written several months before I got it, um, and we probably spent about four or five months on pre-production and two days on actually shooting the film, and then about two months after that on post-production. For Killed in Action, I wrote the script a few years ago and kind of let it sit uh, on my computer because it was a period piece and I thought, this is very expensive and hard to make. And then uh, once I decided to make it, it took a few months to raise the money. Then we shot it in a single day and then edited, edited it over the course of about a month. <laughs> We shot it in one whole day. One whole day. <laughs> oh, right. uh, it took about a year uh, from when I wrote it uh, to pre-production and everything like that. Uh, but yes, we shot uh, during the third game in the World Series. Uh, so that was quite interesting. And uh, then we edited about two, two and a half months. So it just came out uh, last February. Uh, I'll keep it short. Uh, ours took about two to three years to, to do. Fantastic. So, uh, oh, uh, some questions question from the audience. Say, say I can see one. Okay, here's one. Cutscenes. Yes, the editing process. How many uh, How many digital bits are laying on the floor? Uh, there were a lot of cutscenes and a lot of moving around the scenes. Um, too many to count. Uh, when it came to the actual film itself, we didn't really cut any scenes. Uh, we did cut half of the script due to budgetary concerns and things like that. So uh, we had to get it all done one day. And uh, so, yeah, half of our script went away. Sorry. <laughs> um, in our case, maybe because I wrote, directed, and acted it, I kept everything. Because I was lost. Why? Uh, yeah, we didn't have any scenes that were cut. Uh, we just had a number of shots that were cut. <laughs> Other questions? Let's see. Uh, yes, you please. The island of Seba, was that the hurricanes? Was that affected? That's my question. So the Seba Island, the hurricanes, etc. When was that filmed? Uh, so we filmed it uh, May of last year. Um, but yes, it was affected by Irma and also Maria just went here. Um, St. Martin, which is more thirty miles north than you go through St. Martin, you go to Seba, was pretty badly uh, destructed. Seba fared pretty well. There were houses where it had lost roofs and then there was no loss of life. Oh, yeah. really, uh, good year. Uh, but yeah, um, they fared well compared to the other islands around them. More questions? I got one for you. Uh, the, uh, the technology process. I mean, uh, in your case, Christine, you had to find some vintage uh, set design. Uh, phenomenal makeup work for yours. Uh, and how did you do the aerial shots? Um, so for the aerials, we used a drone, um, which is comparatively relatively inexpensive uh, piece of technology for uh, aerials and compared to you know, putting a person on an helicopter. But, yeah. uh, for us, uh, actually our producer is here, Kia, who's sitting in the front row, who did a fantabulous job. Uh, but it was all shot at my house, so you know, that was for budgetary concerns as well. Uh, we wanted to make everything uh, very close-knit and almost feel very uh, claustrophobic. Uh, but we also had an amazing makeup designer who had basically reconstructed my face. She actually sewed my face. Uh, all the scarring and stuff like that all together. For us, the house was probably the, the biggest challenge. So we found a house, uh, spent half our budget on it, but a house that had a period stove and that sort of thing. And then we had to bring in the vintage refrigerator 
uh, and uh, all the props and set dressings, which some of them were actually from my grandfather, like the letters in the box are actual letters he sent home during the war. So it was neat kind of looking for those things. We, uh, we actually had a, a particular location for the opening scene that fell through about a week before we were going to shoot. So we had to look around Chicago to try to find another great uh, park bench that looked like it could have been in the 1950s. So that was, that was a pretty big challenge. The apartment that we shot in, uh, the woman who lives there, that's how she lives. And so it, there was nothing that we had to do with the interior of that apartment, which was great. <laughs> Questions? Yeah. Oh, yes, please. What was your inspiration behind your stories? Oh, wonderful. Where did the stories come from? Well, um, because I didn't write counting, um, the, the origin of that story, um, there is a um, the woman who wrote it, she had met this older gentleman who, um, at the point when uh, gay marriage became legal in the United States, um, he was a little despondent over that because he had been with someone for several decades and never had the chance to get married. And, and so her inspiration really for writing it was to uh, essentially say there's a lot of people who, you know, while people are very happy that, that gay marriage is now allowed, there's many, for many people it, it came too late. So that was the, the inspiration, and I just thought it was, a, it was an absolute uh, story. In the case of Killed in Action, I would say it's twofold. One is that most of my professional experience has been as an actor, and I love war films, but I often feel that women are left out, that you too often it's the men on the battlefield and you see you know, a picture of a locket and see the woman at home, but you don't really get a, a fully developed character. So I wanted to explore what a woman at home was doing during, during World War II in particular. And then uh, the second part of that is that my grandfather served in World War II, and he never talked about his time over there. And while he was very proud of his service and did not go through anything like the character in the script, it made me question why we don't talk about what happens in war and how that sort of would come about. So that was sort of the kernel of the idea in my case. Why I wrote it? Why did I write it? Um, I wrote because I broke my leg. Uh, I actually really broke my leg. Uh, I was actually left for dead in the middle of the street. Uh, on New Year's Eve 2015, I had to crawl home uh, because my leg was literally hanging from the rest of my body. Um, when I got home, uh, my wife was there. She took me to the emergency room right away. And I had surgery the next day, and now I have a metal plate in my leg. Uh, but I thought to myself, what if she wasn't there? What, what, what would I do? Uh, I have two kids. My son actually played my son, mm -hmm. and she played my daughter. Mm -hmm. so, uh, I went, I first went to Sabre when I was 10 years old. Uh, and I was right when I got started about to see your dad, and it was. Uh, with my older brother, um, and when we got into the water, it's kind of that story that Fred told when he first dove on Seba, how it blew his mind. Uh, it blew my mind, and that's what really made me passionate about the natural world and wanted, made me want to pursue uh, a career in SEAL, so yeah. So in your case, as far as writing, uh, well, as far as uh, uh, the creation process is concerned. All the other films here uh, started with the script. They all had some idea, wrote it down, and then worked from that. Whereas now, in a documentary style like this, you just go start shooting footage and kind of put it together later. Does the story come later? So uh, this actually took this film pick many forms before it got to where it's at. But we started with what we call treatment. Um, so it's basically a rough draft of the script. Um, it's basically what the story is going to be visually uh, in our mind. But then we go and we shoot, and that changes dramatically. So um, this took many forms is the easiest way to put that. And Other questions? Yes, please. I have a question about that writing process. So um, all these films were excellent, and the writing was really fine. 
Uh, but what's the biggest difference between the, the written script and what you wound up producing on the screen? So what's the difference between the script and what you, we all end up seeing on the screen? Uh, so so I, I did a written script once I got done shooting. Um, and then I brought in an editor, Shannon Muller, who is extremely talented and unfortunately she's not uh, here tonight, but she, you know, she's, she's very talented. And she, as the editor, uh, put the story together and in her way we worked together, producer editor, to um, get to where it was. Probably she might change time this time, so yeah. Uh, for me, we just let it go. I had written about 15, 16 pages. Uh, this thing was probably going to break out in about 25 to 30 minutes. And our great director, David Bradburn and Kia, uh, got together with me and they said, you know, we need to make it tighter. So I had to probably go through about 20 rewrites. Uh, and then when we figured out on the actual day of shooting and everything like that, I think I had to drop two more pages. And that was really difficult. Um, as writers know, it's your baby, you know, and to let go of those pages. Uh, but what we did and how we constructed it, I think, turned out for the best for us. I think because I wrote and directed it, it stayed pretty close throughout the process. I think the biggest changes happened before we shot it. So I have the script that I had written a few years ago and saved on my computer for a long time. And then once I decided to make it, then I did another rewrite, and that's when it probably changed the most. Originally, they weren't going, he wasn't coming over for dinner. It was a surprise that Rick was coming, and so Alice didn't know that he would be there. But then in the rewrite, it changed that. But then once it was changed, it stayed pretty close to what we shot. You know, we changed a few things because I, I didn't write it. Um, originally, the, the title of it was Late, which I thought was a little too generic, and we kind of played around with a number of different titles, and I uh, met with the um, screenwriter who actually lives in New York City, so we had lunch in New York, and we kind of talked about a number of different titles, and, and <coughs> we talked about a few different things related to the word counting, but that all ended up being the, uh, the word that we used for the title. But the big, big difference that I think he made is that she originally set um, the early part of the film in the early 1940s. And when we started thinking about this, and we thought, okay, so it's early 1940s, and then we're also going to move ahead to like 2015. Who are we going to get to play? And it's going to be the age that you know that much. And we figured out what age they're 20 in 1942. By 2015, if you add that up, I don't know my math is, but we're in our 90s, and we weren't sure we'd feel real confident we'd be able to find somebody that, that we could either make up to look 90 or somebody that was 90. So we ended up moving moving into the, to the, the first scene to the 1950s, which actually, I think, worked even better because it is a, a little more of a, of a sort of repressive era. And so we thought, yeah, th this actually would, would work even better because we do have that sense that in that era, these two women, yeah, they're, they're working, but there's no way that they, they could have married. And, and yet they're sort of in this environment where it been really difficult for them to even speak up. So it ended up actually, I think, working out um, quite well for us. And, and Gary, the screenwriter, was totally on board with it. Okay, your films have been shown at the Naperville Independent Film Festival. Congratulations. What's next for the films? Um, well, counting, we've got several festivals. We we're playing uh, in Atlanta this weekend. Uh, we've got Festivals, actually, another the second one in Atlanta in October. We've got Tampa, New York City, uh, Washington, D.C., uh, and it's going to be playing again in Chicago uh, November 11th, the Chicago Short Reels Film Festival. So we're, uh, yeah, we've been on, on quite a little journey with, with this film for about uh, eight months now. We have a few more festivals coming up as well, and then I have a feature film that I'm in pre-production for that I wrote, directed, and will start. Uh, we're in the middle of our run as well. I just got back from Austin. Uh, we're at a festival down there. We will also be at the 
the Chicago International Real Shorts Fest as well in November. Uh, and then uh, just waiting to hear from other festivals, and I'm also in production for my next film as well. So. Um, so we're Sam Hands Wolfman. We're uh, our next festival is Wildlife Conservation Film Festival in New York City, um, and then hopefully more festivals down the road. But our end goal is to get into the curriculum, uh, the elementary school curriculum, and save us. So a lot of these kids on now don't even know that in their backyard they have one of the most pristine quarries on this side of the world, if not the world. Um, so yeah, we want to get them in the water, whether it's swimming or diving. Yeah. Fantastic. Big hand for.